all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here. Well, you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you're tuning in. Today I'm joined by my very good friend, Rico, from London. How are you doing, Rico? Good. Uh, this is the real war. Forget about last night. This is the real hashtag war today when we delve into this card. <laughs> what did you think to the uh, Matchroom show last night and the Channel 5 show last night? Should we start with the Channel 5 one first? Yeah. Um, I mean, I watched the main event. It was good that it was on catch-up by 930 uh, I think the biggest story around here is that CBS uh, owns Channel 5 and they also own um, Showtime, so Viacom CBS. So they put, this, they put this card on Channel 5, I imagine not for a lot of money. So hopefully this will mean that we'll get more of these Showtime PBS cards, uh, sorry, PBC cards on Channel 5. And I think it's just good for boxing. It's also good for fans to see guys like Tank Davis and these American guys that are actually really excited. And I thought, forget about the knockout. I just thought it was a really good fight at a high level. You know, the exchanges were good. Both fighters were on point. They both, they both small uh, lightweights uh, at best. So it was, it was a good match fight. And, you know, Tank fought against the first guy that, you know, really was there to win and actually believed that he could win. Uh, and I thought that knockout was just spectacular and tank, but that right uppercut is just vicious. And he set him up there and put him on the ropes so he couldn't get out and moved his head and something we don't see many British boxers do, moving their head that way and threw that right uppercut and it was lights out. It was all action. <laughs> Compelling. What did you think? I thought it was a good fight. I didn't watch any other stuff on there. I just watched that one. Because you're flipping around all channels and streams on that, aren't you? But I had him down to win by KO, as you know, by my previous Ooh. video. So I felt vindicated. But I think he's a talent. And he seems to be tech, being... He seems to have a bit more maturity about him now, doesn't he, do you think? Yeah, I think they've just put his arm around him. And, um, you know, he's he's had the same trainer since he was an amateur, right? And Tank, I know all, story, all boxers have backstories, right? But... You know, it's a, if you watch that documentary, the build-up documentary, Tank's dad was in prison. His mom was a crack addict. He went to children home, child home after another child home from age 11 and, you know, grew up in the streets and stuff. And boxing saved him. So, yeah, well, you know, you can't expect a guy like that to be polished and, you know, articulate and a guy like that to always behave in the way that we expect them from top talents. But as long as he can keep on the straight and narrow the end of the day, he's always delivered in the ring. He's got the highest knockout ratio outside of better beer in boxing. So, you know, you can't knock him for what he's produced in the ring. He, he knocks everybody that's in front of him and his team have posted a pass and this was his first pay-per-view. Um, personally, I don't give a shit about the number. Oh, I should have sworn. That's your oh, three I'm pounds gone. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you a drink next time I'm up there. So... Uh, so that's, uh, I don't care about the numbers, but that was good boxing at a high level that we got on British telly and nobody had to pay for that. So, um, you know, I think there's a star in the making there and hopefully they'll get him in the ring with some of these other lightweight contenders and other guys. I'd love to see him in with the winner against Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. I think that would be a good fight. Um, that's what they'll but, do now. They're all going to swerve Lopez, aren't they, and try and pick as much money up we are going for Unified. Well, we'll see what happens with um, the zone in the US because obviously there's a lawsuit between Canelo and Golden Boy and that and the zone. So that's sort of very complex. And that might mean that Ryan Garcia, who's obviously in camp with Canelo and close to Canelo, it might be that he fights one fight with Golden Boy and then he exits and he's a free agent or goes to PBC or goes somewhere else. Canelo promotions and then that fight could be made because I think, I mean, Ryan Garcia is primed to beat Luke Campbell. That's the story they want to build. I'm not as high on Ryan Garcia, but, you know, he's a good fighter. You can't knock him. He might be a social media guy, but he's a very, you know, he's an accomplished amateur. He's a talented fighter. And I think he's just a bit too young and fresh for Luke Campbell. And Ryan Garcia himself has a good highlight knockout reel really. Do you think, Rico, that this is last throw at dice for Luke Campbell? Mm-hmm. 
Otherwise, they wouldn't send him on a Golden Boy show, would they? They'd be bringing they'd be bringing Ryan Garcia over here, and they'd be backing, you know, making sure that if he goes on points, he's a good chance of winning. They don't want to invest any more money in him. And why is he thirty three? He's had a long, yeah, he's had a long amateur career. I don't think he's looked spectacular in his early fights, but I just don't think he's transitioned to the pros in the way that we saw expected after those early fights. And wh where does he go off if he loses to Ryan Garcia? That's a contender. Where do you go from there? Well, this is how I look at it, right? When I look at Luke Campbell, I always go on about the six levels, don't I? Area, English, British, Commonwealth, European and world, right? Six levels. Out of them, he's got a Commonwealth. That's it. He ain't got a British. He ain't got a European. So he's gone Commonwealth and then they're jumping in with people like Lomachenko and now this guy. Is there something missing? Are people not wanting to learn the craft? I think, didn't he fight against Mendy? Wasn't that for the European? And he lost. He, he no, lost, wasn't. lost, didn't he? So he hasn't got a European, has he? No, exactly. So his level is probably around that European level. And yeah. it, it saved him that he gave that he had a close fight with Linares. That yeah. probably saved him and gave him credibility. But he's just a name, isn't he? Olympic gold medalist. So we're Audley Harrison. Yeah, that's it. He's selling his name. Uh, you know, he seems... For all intents and purposes, a really nice kid. Um, I, you know, I wish him the best of luck, but it's pro boxing at the end of the day. There's no. Well, I spelt the Audley Harrison one. European, won it? Yes. So he did better than Luke Campbell. He did. So what's best belt that Tommy Coyle's got? Commonwealth. Probably or yeah, I would say so. Better than WBC or whatever WBA trinket they might have got for beating conceded. Yeah, it's mate, the pony. Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> belt. We're talking six levels, aren't we? And yeah, this is where with boxing shoots its senate foot. Everybody thinks, oh, we'll get we Eddie and we'll get a trinket belt and we'll get catch whale scene, but people are coming back with good idings, aren't they? And Eds that are like. Bang, 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 bang. On aeroplane, don't we? Home all busted up. Remember what cleverly looked like, don't we? Mm -hmm. When he went out there, and he'd already had a world title, but he got his by email, didn't he? His WBO. He did. Kramer couldn't get on the plane. Now fighters, they're being protected. For example, Anthony Yard, I'm a massive fan, but he didn't go through the levels. No, he's sort of going back through the levels now, isn't he? What happened when he got to fight Kovalev? Got knocked out, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So, Lee Purdy, what happened to him? Splattered by Devin Alexander. I mean, well, that Paul, was a massive mismatch, wasn't it? How did Paul Smith get a fight with Andre Ward off the back of fighting Tommy Tolan and J David Zarabia? Right? Yeah, that's it. So, all right, then moving on. Uh, let's move on to the match room. Halloween or Halloween show. All right, for that one, Smido. Matchroom Halloween show. What did we think to it, right? I don't want to talk. I only want to talk about a few fights on it, right? Savannah's. What do you think to that? Uh, I think Savannah performed very well given her opponents. And also, what I really liked about Savannah in that fight was that she was quite relaxed and. Again, back to the head movement point. You don't see many British fighters, men or women, move their head like she does. She, she, she all the all the shots for Hannah Rankin were was throwing. She wasn't parrying them. She wasn't blocking them with her gloves. She was perfectly moving her head, and that meant that Hannah Rankin was falling short. And then when she went to work and sort of warmed up, it was very um, explosive. It's a great finish. Do you know that girl, Savannah? Right. Don't forget, I, I've spent a lot of time over there and I've, and I've been abroad with her, with Peter and Dennis and that. And I watched her in the gym. Me and Bunny used to watch her. First one in the gym, last one out. She does all the stretching. She takes it very serious. She's very regimented. I watched a program about Steffi Graf. She was very, very similar. Yeah. Very, very regimented. Even on... When they finished the session, some of them were doing a bit of strength and conditioning, and some weren't. She'd want to do it and improve all the time. 
And hard work has got her that world title. And that's the mess that sends a message to all boxers out there that if you put the effort in, you can get there. And there's just some of the things I watched, like how they were doing bench pressing and kettlebells and pull-ups and all that. And she were bunny were putting her through it and she were aching, but she wanted more and she wanted to learn. And she and he's changed the style from day one, Peter. I mean, obviously how she's very side on now and that bit yeah. now she, she it's very she's very similar to how Yui's style is but she's also got that other bit to her game where she can take them out can't she as soon as he told her to step it up they just blew her away didn't they they did they did and I, and I think that she'll have too much in a locker for Clarissa Shields personally yeah I, I, you know what that's an interesting fight and I think it's going to be Clarissa Shields is smaller but she's very quick and she's got very much that sort of American star, which is quite explosive. Like we saw with Tank yesterday, where she throws a lot of combination punches. So what Savannah needs to do early in that fight is connect a few times and get her not being so willing to come forward. No. But I think the longer the fight marinates, the Mar- more likely it's, yeah, the more likely it is that Savannah will win that fight because Savannah is just improving and improving and improving and. She's coming, you know, she's coming to a peak. I wouldn't say she's at a peak now. She probably is not far off. But next couple of years, you'll see her just improve. And whatever weight she settles at, that's the perfect weight. Yeah. Whether they make that weight, if they make that fight a middle weight, I don't know whether that takes anything else for Savannah. Um, but I'm hoping that they can make it. You know, they can make it... Um, sorry, I meant light middle weight. So I'm hoping they can make it middle weight because any... Light middle weight. Be... She was fighting at light heavyweight a few weeks ago. Uh, I know. And, and I swear Clarissa, she... Light middle weight for that. What are they going to do, boil it? She's six foot one. What are they going to do, boil her down? That's what I mean. I, I mean, but... Gonna... That's what I mean. I mean, Shield has recently fought at super Walter weight, so... Or light middleweight, so I, I hope they can make that fight a middleweight because Shields won all the bouts of middleweight. But against Hammer, she looked good technically, but didn't have the power. Well, exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. I think we both agree. I think we both agree that we want to see Savannah being well paid because she's put in the graft. Yeah, she's not there like some of these female boxers. Um, I don't need to name any names. They're using other assets to build their profile. Um, she can't do that. She's not into all that. No, she does she her talking in the ring. Talking. She lets her fist. Do. She's not into that social media thing. She doesn't like interviews. You don't see her hanging out at back of Coogan, do you? Like other other fighters, female fighters, mentioning no names. She's not into all that. Because she's already got the pedigree, hasn't she? Yes. Everybody says that the best female boxer in world boxing is Clarissa Shields. She got all the belts. Is she? Is she two-time Olympian as well? Yeah, two-time Olympian. And Savannah flogged her in world championships and got a gold medal, and that's Clar- Clarissa's only defeat. Female only defeat. Sorry, amateur and pro. Pro. Oh. So she's got to correct that. So she has to come to Savannah now. She's got to do. She's got to want to put that right, hasn't she? Oh, that's the only fight where she'll get her money, right? That's the only fight where but where she will get paid, Clarissa Shields. Mm. Yeah. So, interesting. Uh, moving on then. Well done to Savannah. I know you're watching with Peter. Well done. Uh, well done to Peter Fury, your second world champion. But it should be free, really, because you we were robbed by Park in Parker fight by Terry O'Connor. Won't it? Won't we? Won't, isn't that right, Terry? Now, moving on, uh, the Australian kid, Cambosa, who fought Lee Selby. What did you think to that fight? I mean, Lee Selby just bores the hell out of me. I mean, he's not a lightweight, firstly. And, you know, the first half of the fight, going to back to the commentary point, they were labouring on about the point, how slick Lee Selby is, how great his footwork is. What? Gambosa's junior stood in the centre of the ring. Of course, Lee Selby's trying to move and pot shot his way to victory. But it wasn't a good performance from Lee Selby by any account because did you see Gambosa's junior being hurt at any point? No. 
And then we go to the two-minute round as well. I mean, Christ, British Boxing Board of Control, two-minute rounds. <laughs> why, did they, why did they stop the clock after two minutes in that fight? I have no idea. They rang the bell, and Sky didn't really know to pawn it until somebody said it later in the fight. I think it's the next round. They said, oh, that was a two-minute round. No, nobody really made a point of it, which I thought not, was the best They're not going to do anything selling a product, aren't they? They're not there to tell the truth, are they? Jesus. Heaven forbid they should be honest with us, the Sky Pundits. Uh, moving on from Lee Selby, because it, it, it's like Lawrence Acoli. You wouldn't open your curtains to watch them, would you? Nope. So, moving on from them, uh, the main event. Ale- Alexander Usek. We're, is he a world champion gold as well as Olympic gold? He is, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's, he's is it won so many amateur series. Champion. Yeah, he's won everything, hasn't he? He's undisputed at cruiser. He beat he beat uh, Baturbia twice in amateurs, didn't he? Or once or twice? I think twice, yeah. wasn't it? Who's the biggest puncher, pound for pound from all the weight divisions? Bigger than Wilder, isn't he? He's hundred percent, isn't he? Yes. So if Usyk can deal with him, a massive puncher like that, he dealt with Joe Joyce, who's ninety mm-hmm. percent KO ratio. Why are people saying that he's going to struggle with Joshua because yeah. of size and that? He's the bigger they are, for the better for him, isn't it? Because he can't get nailed, can he? You know what? I probably disagree with you on that. But the first point to make is the ring was very small last night. I'm sure you well, noticed that's, that. The... that. We know why, don't we? Yeah, exactly. The ring. That, they? Yeah, of course they have. Small ring. But for me, Usyk just didn't look like a heavyweight because early on in the fight, when Chisora had more energy, he was just leaning on him and he looked very small. And Usyk doesn't really... He was avoiding engaging too much in close quarters. And then later as the fight went on and um, Chisora tired out, he was just picking him off. But that was always going to happen. But, but, but I don't think with those tactics, Usyk can beat... Joshua or Fury, I think for me, this is the perfect way how they're going to hype him up and they can hype Dell up and they can make him into a legit opponent for Joshua for pay-per-view, which he, I think that's a fair pay-per-view. But I just don't think he looked like a heavyweight. When, Ho- when Holyfield came up in, uh, to heavyweight division, he looked more like a heavyweight. He was already bulked up. He fought in a style where he was a smaller man. He liked to fight on the inside. He wasn't relying on his legs. Whereas him... He was trying to avoid anything that was coming. He wouldn't. He wouldn't really want to engage. He took a lot of shots as well. Um, so you can't be taking those shots off Joshua or Fury or even someone like Dubois. At least that's my opinion or how I how I saw the fight. He, uh, I think age might have caught up with him to fight at that yeah. weight. A few years ago, uh, he sparred. Vladimir, didn't he? And did he put him down or bashed him up, didn't he, in Austria? Yeah. But that would have been a, a, a sharper Usyk, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it all. Carl Frotch said that he don't think he can do anything with Joshua or Fury, but he thinks he can beat the others, didn't he? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. And you know what? Even in the Bradis fight in the World Boxing Super Series, he was hit a lot. It wasn't like he wasn't being hit in that fight. So it's not, he's not an impossible guy to find. He's not the Matrix like Lomachenko was in his prime. Yeah. Uh, what do you think to Derek's performance? I mean, he was conditioned, right? Came forward, drew a lot of punches, missed a lot of punches. He was just well, there swinging. Game. He was just there swinging. Well, it wasn't a good performance. Rico, were well, they calling him game? Yeah, game game opponents, all action, rugged, um, durable. It, it, durable. Yeah, it's one of those where he was conditioned to go the twelve rounds. You know, Ruben Tavares was there, making sure that he could go the twelve rounds. He had bulked up. He was just plodding around the ring, chasing music, trying to throw haymakers, and he was just trying to catch him on volume, just throwing more punches, heavier looking punches. There was nothing, there was no game plan. There was no game plan apart from come out quick, throw a lot of punches, and then just chase him around the ring and just throw more punches than Usyk does. Can you, I mean, can you answer me this? Go on, Rico. Can you answer me this, right? Why all of a sudden has everybody got it into their heads that Derek Chisora is this ice man? 
<laughs> I have no what, idea. What is his, what's his KO ratio, Rico? Have a let, look. Me, let, let me check it out, but it's not going to be high. 32 and 10, isn't it? But I don't know how many knockouts he has got to be exact. It can't be any more than 20. 22 or something, if that. Must He's be. got 23. 23 knockouts. 23 out of 42. What's that? 53%? 54%? Yeah, something like that. So, so basically, 23 stoppages out of 42 fights, and we're talking about him like he's Ernie Shavers. It's recency bias, isn't it? We remember the Takam knockout, we remember the Spetka knockouts, and we remember the Price knockout. The That's the recency guys, bias. Them CD class. Exactly. You know, it's unbelievable. That, and everybody's got it down because they've got Davy Day, they've wheeled Davy Day out, Bean. Eddie Earn and all the all, all, all the rest of them, Johnny Nelson. What they do, they wheel them out, and they all keep so in is stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. He's doing things that he's never done before. He's 36, but he's going on 26, and he's eating kangaroo meat. Right. <laughs> so all these casuals, they all, they all I bumped into some of the other day and they were going on about it. And I says, Why are you talking about him? Like he's Ron Lyle or George Foreman. You're out of your mind. He's never beat a former, current or future world champion. He's failed at anything above Euro level. And the Euro belt that he's got were really an, a gift. He's a, he, you wouldn't even say he's British level now, would you? Would the bar beat him? Yes. Right. Would Joyce beat him? Yes. He didn't want that fight, did he, last year at Joyce fight? So Dubar and Joyce beat him. They're British stroke Euro level, aren't they? Do we agree? Yeah, I agree. They beat Del Boy. So what, what's Del Boy now? Is he English level? He's English level, isn't he? English stroke British. Oh, yeah, I think I think that's I think that's sort of uh, probably below English. So I think he's around that British Euro level. I wouldn't say that he would necessarily beat Dubois or Joyce, I don't think he would. Level, aren't they? Yeah, but I would say that he's around that level. Around that level. So if they're Euro level, he's British then, isn't he? Yeah, he's British level. He's What's British David level. David Price? Because Jazora beat David Price. What level's he at? You'd say fringe British English level. Fringe, and what? And he, and he destroyed Dave Allen over 10 rounds. So what level's Dave Allen? Area. Area level, right. So English whatever. slash area, yeah. Fringe right. English area level. All right, then we'll come to him in a minute. So let's finish off on the Usyk thing. What next for Del Boy? I think there's a few things that we need to raise about this whole narrative after the fight. So afterwards, they wheel out Bellew and Dave Caldwell, who are both adamant that uh, Chisora won a close decision. And then Bellew starts calling out that the scores and scoring in boxing needs to be looked at because one of the judges awarded a 117-112 card to um, Usyk, which effectively means that Usyk won seven rounds. They shared one round and four went to Dell, which is a card I can understand. Yeah. Two of the cards are 115, 113, so that's seven rounds to Usyk, five rounds to Chisora. But, but there's not, this is not the point where we need to start looking at scoring. This is not the this is not the thing, and also the whole thing about oh because he was busier. That's what I saw. Dave Caldwell's now come out to say I need to look at the fight back and backtracking, backtracking. He's an IFL apologising and saying that you know I saw that he was just busier and he was coming forward. We're not scoring. Was fight. busier than Vasquez. Yeah, he scored we down to Vasquez, didn't he, by a mile? Yeah, we're not scoring both ways. Yeah. We're not scoring fighters on coming forward and throwing a lot of punches because they're missing. There's a criteria for scoring fights, and most of the people on telly that are doing it have no idea of the criteria. They're scoring it to their mates and scoring it along the Sky narrative. And you ask, what next? They are doing this. Eddie Hearn had him halfway through the fight. I think he had Dell off by 5-3, five, 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 three, yeah, eight rounds. So he was effectively saying if Dell wins one more round, then it's going to be a draw. Um, they're doing this to make sure that Dell Boy can fight against White 
in his next fight or fight against somebody else or right. yet another pay-per-view. Yeah. Everybody's writing that it was a close fight. No. Well, Forget about the scoring. It wasn't a close fight. It just wasn't a close fight. Do you think that it were wrong for Tony Bellew, Chisora's big chum, and Caldwell, his other big chum, to be ringside pundits on a fight with her mate fighting? I get, I get that they are ringside pundits, right? Because they sort of scra scrape in the barrel at the moment with pundits because a lot of people don't want to go in the bubble. Some people want to be seen all the time, so they'll go in the bubble and leave their families. Yeah. Um, but I think it's wrong that they are so adamant on how they score the fight, which is against the judges and calling out referees for incompetence when they won't do that when... Example, when John Ryder lost to Callum Smith, we didn't see Bellew scoring out. You know, we didn't see Bellew shouting incompetence, did we? Um, Bellew was shouting from ringside non-stop. Yeah, I mean, that was... Come on. Um, I, could hear, I could hear him. Eric, hey, Bill. I could hear all that. I know, I know. It, annoy, it, was... it annoys you, doesn't it? it, it annoy, he's it annoying, does. isn't it? Tony Bellew, you're annoying. You annoy me. <laughs> I think the I don't, I'm not earning any reddies off these videos. <laughs> <laughs> I think office out and take my car off me. Yeah, the bailiffs are gonna come but take the camera off you. Worst investment they've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. So yeah, I think the problem is they couldn't just say cleanly that Yusik won that fight. Usyk's above Chisora level, rather than trying to push the narrative that Dell's at this, you know, he's proven that he's stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding he doctor than Mr. Than Mr. Bean, right? Uh, that's the problem. And the other problem is easily that everybody was watching the same fight on the telly. Nobody's going to say that it was a close fight. Forget about the scorecards. You might have scored a couple of rounds to yeah. Usyk, which I can understand how people scored it that way. But Sometimes fights are scored close, but it doesn't mean it's a close fight. You know, you know, because yeah. somebody does the better work. Somebody has a bigger moment. Somebody's, you know, you, Chisora was hurt at the end of one round. He's wobbling back to his stool. This is how I look at it, right? David A has come out. I've seen loads of interviews today. I've been watching it all week. David A seems to be making a big, massive PR thing about how great Derek looked and how sharp and how focused and how much more he's got left in the tank and how he's not retiring and all this. He keeps pushing that, look what I've done for you kind of thing, doesn't he? But mm -hmm. he brought that Ruben Tavares on and all this blah -de blah Well, let me tell you this about old Rhubarb Ruben, because he is Rhubarb. They brought him in for Dylan White, didn't they? Got rid mm -hmm. of Martin Tibbs. He got ice, Dylan White. They brought him in for Del Boy, didn't they? Del Boy were blowing. He looked like he was going to have an heart attack after round three. He looked gassed, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how is he supposed to be stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet? And this Iron Man, when he was blowing out in his backside after nine minutes of action. So we, we, what were all that strength and conditioning thing? So David A, stop trying to make up for your mishaps with what you've done with this. All you are is a salesman. You tell lies on IFL daily. Sky Sports and all your internet blogs. Stop lying to the fans, David. Do you know David A? I watched him over day. My mate was there and he said, you know what? Every time David A's either fighting or one of his fighters is fighting, they're always doing stuff they've never done before in gym, aren't they? They're always yeah. freaks of nature and on the weight and on it and really up for this. It's just... It's the same old garbage that's been spoke about, isn't it? I, you know him? He's not worth a cup of cold pissing, David A, mate. Let me tell you this. I wouldn't have him in my company because I know I know things about him, mate. Let me tell you. I wouldn't have him in my company. He's a sneak. And let me tell you this. You know when he's done with Del Boy, they'll be at it at the end. Because Del Boy falls out with everybody, doesn't he? So yeah. when I know this, he's my new best mate. Look, mate. Watch it, watch it unfold like an onion. But seeing him come out, going on about that, how he's stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet and all that rubbish, he's got 10 losses. 
They can't keep recycling Derek Chisora. He's going to be talking like Riddick Bow and Dave Allen in another another 12 months. He's already shot to pieces. We've seen it with our own eyeballs after three rounds, Rico. They mind all that. I had I thought Del Boy nicked it. You know where do you earn? Apples and pears, plot up cheeky Nando's. I thought he nicked it. Here's a few quid, blah de blah. He didn't nick it. Now he's saying he thought it were a draw. They asked Coogan, didn't he, on IFL? He went, Oh, I thought it were a draw or seven five to either way. So he sat on fence. What did Bean have it? I don't know. Bean did Bean didn't score it. It was um Andy, what's it called? Whatever his name is. Andy Scott or Andy he had it. He had it for you, say. He had it for you, say. He's all right, man. This guy. Yeah, he was. He was actually good at scoring. Uh, in, in my opinion, they they clearly realised that their scoring's been atrocious on the telly. So they they did have Matthew Macklin scorecard anymore, and he was there scoring, and he actually did a good job. What did Froch have it? I mean, Froch Froch said that Usyk won. He, yeah, he was having none. He was having none of the. Chat that Del Boy proves that he's at this level, or look, but Del Boy's not beat a former champion. Dave Allen's beat a former champion, John Lucas Brown. I mean, mm-hmm. look, Del Boy's not beat a former champion yet, mate. Former, current, or future. He's not Euro level. He's on the slide. He's got 10 losses. So, how can we have him in a pay per view in February against the white Povetkin loser? It can't happen, shouldn't happen. Can't Rico? They can't put Del Boy on pay per view again now after that. What? What's going on? They can't you do know. it, mate. It'd be wrong. I'll be interested to see if Coppinger's tweeting the numbers later because I imagine the numbers will be shocking for this card. Well, he's had his boy, isn't he? he's going to print what they want him to say, isn't he? I know, but we all know the truth. It's not going to do well. Just go on to uh, com, don't you? If you want the proper ones. Well, yeah, exactly. You have to put them up. The, the, uh, the other interesting point was that uh, Chisora was saying on BBC Radio 5 Live that Dell needs a proper corner. He can't just have strength and conditioning guys in his corner. So whether that was a dig at Ruben Tavares, I, I wonder, because obviously Ruben Tavares isn't there in Portugal at camp with Dell. Uh, so, There's sorry, but uh, Dillian, with Dillian. Well, probably, yeah. I mean, look at the results. I mean, how many times did fighters have Ruben Tavares and then get knocked out or lose the fight and then he moves on to the next guy? David A twice. Who else has had him? David A's had him twice. Dylan's Dylan. had him once. That's three. Chisora's just had him and he's been licked. I, I mean, what, what's all that about? Is that the same guy who were handing print at when Mark Tibbs flew out to Portugal? He gave Mark Tibbs, Mark said, what's been going on? And he handed him a printout, didn't he? Of, uh, he said on my channel, didn't he? Well, he handed him a, a spreadsheet of what they'd done or something. And he said, oh, we've strengthened his ankles up or something. Or, I don't know. Some, he handed spreadsheets out. What's all that about? They're trying to make boxing complicated and high tech. And they shouldn't. It's Boxing's boxing, isn't it? Right? You've got all these people that are coming in left, right and centre. Doing all this breathing stuff and putting this round you at it. Listen, you know, in 1920s, they used to do 25 rounds, didn't they? 25 rounds and fight every month. Now they're fighting twice a year, 12 rounds, but they've got all it, we've got all this high tech stuff and this and that. What what are they doing? I um <clears throat> when I was in Texas and I met up with um Derek James, who trains uh, Errol Spence and um the other Charlo. I asked him if um, Spence uses strength and conditioning. He's like, no. He's like, I used to do a bit of strength and conditioning training, and we just do boxing training. And in terms of weight, Spence just look, can't, you know, looks what he eats, and they go to the scales regularly and figure stuff out. And that's how they've always done it. He says, we don't need strength and conditioning. The other Charlo does strength and conditioning, but he's like, that's his business. That's not mine, but... In my gym, we train boxing. We're not here to do strength and conditioning. He's like, I train fighters. I don't train, you know, bodybuilders or, you know, runners or something like that. It's a, it's a different sport. You don't need... The reason why why fighters get them around is because 
they can feel at the end of the camp when the data is showing that they're trending upwards, it just gives them a comforting thing. But when you get in that ring, nobody cares about how many squats did you do, you know, how much did you bench press or how much did you squat uh, more in this camp than the previous camp. Let me just tell you something now, right? And I've said this for a long, long time, and I always revert back to Frotcher's career because I know it off by heart and we've spoke many hours of it years. He's got diaries, as you've heard him mention, haven't you? All right? From his 13 years of pro, yeah? 02, Fort Groves in 14, retired at the beginning of 15. 13 year. Every training session, he'd log it. And then he'd look back on the camp and he'd think, no, oh, did all right there, did all right then. Go through it all. Don't forget, he had two defeats and he avenged one of them. And he never fought Ward in Nottingham. The fight didn't come off. Yeah. The point I want to make is he logged everything. Get up in the morning, do his six-mile run in 36 minutes or under. Right? And, he, and he'd know when he was running around Nottingham, he'd look at his clock and he'd think, oh, I should be on that next street now at this time. Or, oh, I'm ahead of where I should be. And he'd, he'd look and he'd be like that running on, on his run, doing his runs with Adam folks. Now, let me tell you this. When he'd done all his running... He'd log it down, right? But McCracken didn't get up with him in the morning to do it. He believes you do that yourself, right? And then if you did any strength and conditioning, you do it yourself and write it down. You know what you need to do. You don't... It, all these people that have got these strength and conditioners, do you know why they've got them? Because they can't get out of bed in the morning to do it. These people are there to say, come on, up. That's all it is. It's mental. It's a weakness, you know. I'm having these people around, if you ask me. It's a weakness. It's all right Joshua hasn't done it, but he's at the AS and the mingling about all day. But when you're in a one-man camp, like Dylan White with a strength and conditioner, it's to get you up. Why do they have nutritionists? Because they can't keep the feet out at fridge. Look, you know what to eat, don't you? I used to speak to Carl many a time and he'd say, I think he told me once he got up in middle at night. And I said, what for? He said he just needed something in his body, some sugar. He went downstairs and he bit half a bit into half a muffin and he said he went back upstairs to bed then and he was playing on his mind all the time are you with me what he'd just done because mm. they don't do that do they but you know when they're struggling with a couple of weeks to go and it happens they're only human aren't they but can you imagine some of them they've got to have these nutritionists around them all the time they say to him what Dominic Ingle says don't they empty all your fridge and fill it with salary it's all mental he might be right there but You've got to have that mental thing not to open the fridge, aren't you? All these people are doing, they're just taking money off fighters. Fighters know what to eat, when, what they've got to do. When they go to bed at night and put their head on that pillar, they should ask themselves, they're ticking your boxes in your diary like the Cobra does. Have I trained hard today? You ask yourself, yeah, I've trained hard today. right? You go and ask Clinton Woods. When he got to the end of his career, he said it on Asylum. He'd normally do, he'd do, normally do his six-mile runs, but he would cut in corners, you know, towards the end. Like Carl Zaggy won, he got dropped in his last two. Because hunger's gone, on it? You've made your yeah. dough, your hunger's gone. You've got to keep that hunger, haven't you? These fighters that are bringing these Ruben Tavares on and these other so-called experts, they all know what to eat, as I've just said. It's just... <laughs> You're parting with your money, aren't you? I used, to go see Fr I used to go see Frotch and he'd turn up on his own with a big, massive sports bag. I'd say, you got nobody to carry that. And he'd go, why do I want to pay somebody to carry this? Well, don't you have a strength and condition? Why do I need to tell me something to get me up or what to eat and when, when to lift weights? Or th these, You know, if you're, you know, world champions, there's a difference, isn't there? There's champions, isn't there? And there's world yeah. champions. The champions yeah. are then... You trinket belt man, and there's world champions. Dylan White and Derek Chisora, they're not going to be world champions. The British level stroke Euro level men, they're trying to get to world champions and they think to get there, I've got to throw money at the job. I've got to get this top strength and conditioner guy because David A he says I need him. David A he's not boxing no more. He needs an income. He's got to make himself sound important, hasn't he? They're all being calm. Look, Derek Chisora knows what got him into this position he's in now. And it weren't David A and Ruben Tavares, were it? Were they on the scene when they were put giving it to Vitaly? 
He set about vitally, didn't he? Where were David A then? He wouldn't crowd one. He wanted to fight Derek. Am I right? Yeah. They had a fight after a press conference, didn't they? He smashed him in head with a bottle, didn't he? Get rid of all these strength and conditioners and all these nutrition men. Whatever the money you've had, consider it severance pay. Take the train and get out of Dodge. What do you think? Do you think if Don Charles was in the corner and running the camp, Dell would have done better? Because I, I actually think that he probably would have done better. There would have well, been more of a game. He should have left Don Charles. He should have never left Don Charles. David A is trying to make his son feel important now, going on about how well he fought and what he did and all that, so he keeps him. But David A also knows Derek Chisora wears his heart on his sleeve. When he gets home, and he'll be home now, he'll be thinking now about next week and all this. It'll all be going through his head, because I know what happens to fighters when they get beat. He'll be thinking... First you're angry, then you're upset. What do you do then? You look for somebody to blame, don't you? But it's never yourself. It, it's never... I mean, we, I mean, with a masterful boxer, and Usyk's a masterful boxer, isn't he, Rico? Come on. He is. He's off the charts. He's top four pound for pound. So Derek will be thinking, well, is it David A? Is it that Ruben? I've just been beat. They're all saying I've won, but I've lost. I've ten losses now. I could be out in the cold. Would I have won with Don Charles? Ooh, it will all be spinning around in his head, mate. If he's got half a brain in that brain of his, he'll go back to Don Charles and he'll go, do you know what, Don? I've left you. How many times have you left him now? Two times before, have not he? At least three, maybe. Three, is it, yeah? Will you take me back? But Don Charles, he's got a bit of pride about him, and he might say, mm -hmm. he might say, John. But it may be David smart enough that he realises he brings in his mate Ruben Tavares there and then we've got somebody to blame and it's not him. What? Well, he's pulling all strings behind the scenes. I know, but that's the point, right? He can say to Derek that, you know what, next camp we won't get a strength and condition. It didn't really work. Let's get rid of Ruben Tavares and you'll be better than ever before. Listen, you know, Ruben Tavares, he'd be surplus to requirements if it means David A losing a pound now. Exactly. Because he's not going to want to let Del Boy go. Because after Del Boy, if he loses any more, he'll be fed over to Dubois, Joyce, and last off, it'll be Gorman, something like that. There's still six or seven more fights. He'll, he'll be punching for pay for another three years until he's 40. He'll be fighting until he's 40 and punching for pay. Then it might be over to MMA, and they'll, and they'll wring what they can out of him. And then they'll be talking, do, 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 like, talking mm -hmm. like that, age 42. You think I'm joking, mate? I've studied the game, mate. Get rid of all these hangers on that are leeching on you. Take a leaf out of the Cobra's book. Pay your trainer, and that's it. Manage yourself. You can be a manager after three years. Pay your trainer, or work out what you're paying your trainer. Frotch used to give him a crack and 10%, all the way up to the Groves fight, all the way from day one. Joshua doesn't do that, does he? They're all on fees. Frotch paid him all the way from beginning to end. I know they say people say he's frugal with money. From beginning to end, all the way. Never paid anybody else a penny. You don't need strength and conditioners, nutrition guys, people driving you about and all this nonsense, patting you on the back, telling you how cool you are. Get rid of them. You have your trainer and that's all you need. That's what I reckon, anyway. There's too many poncers in boxing. They're not in ring. Derek Chisora's come, come out of that ring, hasn't he? His head will be like this today. We all, did you see? Come yeah. On. His head will be out here today. He already had shades on, didn't he? Yeah. You know, afterward, he had Cobra shades on like that film. Cobra was still on. Because he's, he's already busted up, mate. Joe Joyce was busted up against Usain. He busted him Notice. up. Did he notice uh, Coogan hasn't done an interview with Dell? <laughs> yeah, he's not going to go near him, is he? He's saying he had it a draw or 7-5 either way or some. Eddie Hearn's now saying a draw. Look, they're all going to backtrack. That's what they're good at. Because they know the public are not full. I saw George Groves had it 9-3 and I thought that was a fair reflection, 9-3. Audley Harrison, same. Sky website said it was a schooling, didn't they? You know what's funny as well? Belly and uh, Caldwell were saying, oh, when the punch stats come out, we'll see that they'll, they'll uh, punch three to one, one of you six punch, they'll punch or landed. Who was saying that? Belly and uh, Dave Caldwell. You know what? I don't believe, you know what? 
they're, they're pushing them. They're the macho men, aren't they? They know they've got to push that. They've got uh, you to- know what? I looked today, Box and everywhere else, and they don't have any of the stats because Box need to be ringside to do the stats. And they know full well that these guys from the US aren't going to come to the UK to do ringside. So they can say whatever they want and they can get away with it. We can say that, yeah, three to one punches, but none of them landed. And also you're scoring for accuracy, right? You're scoring for whether you've been economical with your punches, how hard they land, you know, what impact they have, who's in control of the fight. The guy that's chasing and swinging haymakers is not in control of the fight. Listen, mate, Thanks, I told Derek Chisora throw one haymaker and he spun round and it ropes. He did. Shot two stick that bad, he was like, well, I might that <laughs> slick. Do you know what I mean? He kept fighting in them little triangles, didn't he, Usyk? You know, like what Lomachenko does? Yeah. They go in like a triangle with a feet, don't they? Yeah. And I, I just I just thought it was such a schooling. It were, it were art, wasn't it, to watch for us. For me personally, I thought oh, sublime man Usyk. He's lovely to watch, isn't he? You know what? He's a great fighter, but I still maintain that against the top heavyweights, just the size difference is too much. But he's a brilliant boxer, and you know, he's schooled. His feet were beautiful. He's schooled the way how you need school boxers, where they always unbalanced. They always willing. You know, they're always ready to attack or defend or counter. He was also not every shot that he threw was with purpose. He knew what he was, why he was throwing the punch, and what he was trying to do. Too many times we see British fighters throw punches to keep the other guy off or busy. Doesn't matter what you're trying. Like that's what Dell was trying to do. Those wide haymakers just to try and land somewhere so that he could get a point from the judges, and then maybe they'd swing the round to him. But that's not boxing, is it? Otherwise, we're going to be scoring fights based on who's busier and who throws more punches, rather than actually who's the better boxer in the fight and who's actually winning the fight. Well, I mean, they're going on about Chisora's performance, like this, and then Bell, you and Colwell saying he won, but like I said, they weren't. it was a similar performance to Lewis Ritson's, wasn't it? And they're not, they didn't say that about Lewis Ritson, they put him down there. What did Macklin have to say when he working last night? Uh, I think he was, but he's pretty quiet, to be honest. I can't remember what he said. Nothing noteworthy, probably the usual. That was a brilliant performance by Dell, but again, I can't remember exactly what he said. Um, All yeah. right, then moving on. Uh, well, let's just finish up on this. Can Usyk beat Deontay Wilder? That's an interesting fight. Um, I think we might, or a lot of people probably have seen that latest Wilder video where he's yeah. saying that Fury's yeah. loaded the gloves and stuff. I think mentally Wilder might be just done. I'm not saying he needs to retire anything. I'm just saying mentally he might not be in the state where he would, where he's willing to fight. But I think Usyk's the perfect kind of guy where him and Wilder will be a great fight. Um, and I think he'd be probably Wilder because Wilder just wouldn't land anything. And what about so you you don't you don't think you, you think he'll beat Wilder then yeah yeah I think so he, he'll just outbox him so Usyk beats Wilder does he beat Anthony Joshua no I don't think so and does he beat Tyson Fury no chance in hell right. just the size difference for t- Tyson uh, Fury is too big There's a four stone between them isn't there yeah and just you know Tyson Fury is a good boxer himself and with that jab he can keep him off and. I also think Tyson's a lot better than Dell in using his weight to lean on guys and in the clinches doing smart stuff, whereas Dell was just trying to dislocate his shoulder most of the time. Well, the, the size difference between Usek and Anthony and uh, Usek and Tyson Fury is four stones. So imagine Usek fighting Liam Williams. That's the difference in it. In yeah. Size and height as well. So, so basically. All right then, but a good a good fight though, would you say? Yeah. Um, I don't think it would be good to watch, but it would be a good fight. I'd like I wouldn't mind seeing that fight compared to the other trash that they talk in Tyson Fury fight against Takam. So I'd definitely love to see that fight compared to that. So what do you think to the show? The show then, Rico, as a whole, what what would you give it out of ten? Eddie, uh, to use my friend Ross's words, pony. <laughs> It was awful. For a pay-per-view, it was awful. I mean, 
Yeah. Apart from the seven, the Sam fight where she beat Hannah Ranking, the rest of the fights were just awful. Yeah, right. So it weren't a pay per view, were it? Eddie, we're on you. Right. And on. Don King legged, and Don King managed to leg Eddie over, which was um, good to see. Don King what? Managed to leg Eddie over, yeah, didn't he? Uh, we'll finish off with David Allen. Right. Let's let's back up a little bit. Twelve month. So no, let's back up to David Price. He lost to David Price mm -hmm. last summer. November ish is offered the bar. Asked for another hundred thousand on top. They said no. He then offered Bacoli. Not that back and offered you if you offered you if you were. Peter offered him twenty five grand of you his money on top of his old already purse he were getting. He's not that back. He's then fighting Ammer. He gets COVID. He's then fighting Lovejoy. He, Don King, the Bond villain, comes in. James Bond villain. <laughs> the guy out live and let die can anger. He comes in and stops it all, doesn't he? Right. So why didn't Eddie Earn go out to bat for Dave Allen and make it happen? And who's at fault? Is it the agent in America who dealt with the Mexico people and Eddie's matchmaker and matchroom did somebody not do their own work and where does it leave Dave Allen because last night apparently he left the arena and then he couldn't get to get some food and he couldn't get back in so he ended up in his hotel room with Lovejoy watching it on Instagram when they should have been fighting <laughs> how bad is that and I've heard he was filming and it's not it's bad that isn't it not letting him back in the arena but rules are rules so what next for Dave Allen and the five fights that we've just spoke about that he knocked back, the Barber, Coley, Yui Fury, Mark Bennett, Eddie offered him Mark Bennett after Aimer and Simon Vellali, he knocked them back. That's five fights. David sparred all them, but he, David said, I'll fight that two and 60 kid, a journeyman. Eddie said, no. Mm -hmm. no. So is he out in the cold at matchroom, Dave, now? Or isn't he bothered about fighting because... His last win were before Price, wasn't it? Uh, Lucas Brown, we don't count. No, he fought against, uh, was it Dorian Darks, that weird yeah, fight? That's where... that under investigation. We... Yeah, that's one. That's, that's the one. Under investigation. So his last credible win were Lucas Brown, wasn't it? Yes. Before the Price fight. And the Price fight were what, 17 months ago? So what next for Dave Allen? Does he fight on Matchroom again? As he pissed him off at Matchroom, we're knocking... Two fights back, Mark Bennett from over here. I think he's Chris Medley trained. And Simon Villali. He's knocked them back. What and don't forget he's knocked Yui back. Bacoli. And and on a Frank, it was a Frank show though, wasn't it? The other one, wasn't it? Uh, Debar. So where where does he go from here now, David? What, what what's happening? Where, where's he going? I don't think he's. I don't think he has matchroom off. I think it's more a case that they want him on the show for to let the, you know, the usual circus go on. He's part of the matchroom circus, isn't he? View, on that one. Yeah, views and you know, fun in the bubble. Everybody's having a good time. Best fun ever. It's like uh, you think about it, all the parties that Bean did and get invited to to school. This is like him being making up for all those lost times. <laughs> What a pub pub quiz? Dart, let's have a game of darts and a sports quiz. Yeah, exactly. They've done it. So anyway, anyways, um, I think with Dave he'll get another shot. But who's to blame? You have to blame the due diligence done by Matchroom because surely at this point a contract would have been signed, and that contract would supersede any agreement. That would have been done by Don King because that contract's legit. Otherwise, there would have been there would have been something in the process of doing the contract where the problems on Lovejoy's side, not on Dave Allen and Matrim's side. So they would have had to compensate Matrim. Has Dave got enough cojones on him to sue Don King? I mean, he can't sue Don King because um, you know this is an issue between Don King and Lovejoy. But I think they were played. And I think this was Don King knew this was happening all the time. He waited until the moment where he could try and negotiate more money for himself um, and get the Trevor Bryan fight on some, what were they talking about? The Zone US card. 
I think that was the end game. So Don King waited until the last moment to force their hand and they pulled out. Maybe Don King wanted too much money, but do you think Don King didn't see this fight come up and then a day later he rings up and says, and didn't see the chat on social media, and a day later he rings up Eddie and says, oh, by the way, you know, one of my fighters is on your cards. By the time, you know, he's doing his wane, or just before the wane, you think Don King wouldn't have seen any of this happening? Of course he would. Or, or anybody around Don King would have never said, Don, have you, have you seen this guy that you meant to be, um, you know, managing and promoting his fight on a matchroom card? He just waited it out. And he knew that he forced a hand and, you know, what matchroom didn't budge up. And I imagine there's a lot behind the scenes that happened where um, they just didn't want to pay up and they probably feel a bit bad for Dave about that. What does Dave do next? I mean, frankly, who cares? Yeah, it, it's become a soap opera, hasn't it, with Dave? I mean, it's a shame, isn't it, really? Body yeah, body. I mean, look, Dave, you know, nothing against the guy who's personally but at the end of the day I would have followed boxers where I know where their career is headed and I know the level that they could reach world level the moment they drop underneath that and there's no viable British fights that they can take if they fight against journeyman opponents from abroad why do I want to see that do you feel that Dave goes in with either journeyman or killers and there's no middle ground I think he's learned now that he can't go in with killers. Uh, I think he genuinely thought that he could beat David Price. I think he thought that David Price was that washed up. We had him to beat Price, didn't we? Yeah, I think he's. I think he's now realised his level and what he wants to do is maximise the opportunity to make as much money as possible from the game. Well, do you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to. I'd like him to say, do you know what? I've been messed about here by these. Like, I'm just going to look after number one. But then again. He always does anyway. But I'd like to see him say, I'll fight Tom Little and start from the beginning. He's 29 in March. Let him fight Tom Little. If he beats Tom Little, he might he might start working his way through levels. And we can find his level then, because but he's had that much punishment now and that many big nights. I don't think he can let it go that bit. Uh, I mean, if you're not on a fight, if you're not on the show, you make your way home, don't you? Jamie Moore went home, didn't he? He wasn't hanging about, was he? Yeah, unless you want to be ringside there, sitting around and on the cameras to be seen. Yeah, but Dave's sitting around on their own. They're all sitting about on their own with masks on, aren't they? So maybe he wanted yeah. to leave the arena because he didn't have a vibe off anything. He wasn't getting a buzz from the show, sat, sat you know, with a mask on. and It's not exciting, is it? Yeah. Maybe he just wanted to go out and then couldn't get back in the arena. Then maybe he might be cheesed off with matchroom. They can't get back in. Eddie will have got to know. Clifton Mitchell and security would have said, hey, Dave Allen, we couldn't let him back in, Eddie. Rules are rules. He'll be fuming. He'll be fuming over that Lovejoy, but he was going to smash Lovejoy's head on a toilet, wasn't he? (laughs) (laughs) And then 24 hours later, they sat in Dave's room watching boxing on Instagram or whatever they were doing. It's all a bit bizarre, isn't it? It's a bit soap opera-ish and that. I don't want him to become... A figure of ridicule where everybody's laughing. Oh, it's Daft Davy. Look at this door. And acting to them like going down with a straight face in a dressing gown and slippers. Uh, pie and mash, love. And everybody like, whoa. It, it, he's better than that. We know that, don't we? But he's, yeah, he is. Dave, he is. And Daft Dave character, hasn't he? And he's a, you know what? At the end of the day, he's a boxer that's reached a level which you know he's beat Lucas Brown he's a boxer that's reached a decent level you want to be known for your boxing and you want to be known as a guy that was a good fighter rather than the guy that was really funny but couldn't really fight or you know didn't really take any big fights yeah and do you think match do you think he's becoming afterthought to match him because if that was say John Ryder they'd have moved heaven and earth to get him an opponent wouldn't they Martin J. Ward, somebody who's got a bit of value to them. They, yeah, they didn't move heaven and earth for him, did they? I think it's I think it's probably a bit unfair to say that. I think it's more the case when you're searching for an opponent last minute for a televised show, every manager wants to get as big a purse as possible. Uh and also Dave wants a style that he can easily beat because it was meant to be a showcase fight for him, wasn't it? Martin Someone like Bennett, Simon Vanili. Mark. Yeah, but maybe Mark Bennett would have been too. Maybe Mark Bennett would have been a handful. 
Well, Dave sparred him. He sparred Villali, hasn't he? Maybe he thought, I don't fancy them. If I lose against them, where do I go? Yeah. But he wanted to fight a 260 guy. I mean, where's he at wanting that? Eddie wouldn't put that on a pay-per-view, would he? They'd be hell on. No, I mean, he'll probably be in the Joshua show. He'll be in the Joshua show. Do you think they just cut the losses and said, Dave, you're not fighting, Lovejoy, you're not fighting, and then Don King, you're not getting a scare it? Yeah, I think that's what they did. That's Don King they did. was trying to st- strong arm them because the whole chat about Trevor Bryan coming, you know, fighting another show, they would have probably had to overpay Trevor Bryan. So Don King would have made a good whack off mistake made by the matchmaker, Matchroom. The new matchmaker just hasn't done a really good job recently, has it? And do you think that it's the accountants by name, accountants by nature syndrome with how they dealt with it? Yes. I mean, look, they've got revenues for, you know, they look at the revenues of, and potential pay-per-view buys and estimate those. And based on that, they know how much they're going to make and they're not going to eat into their own profits. If anything, they save money by not having Dave and Lovejoy. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? All right, then what uh, what did you think of Carl Frotcher's performance? On his, I thought it was good, Luke. You know me, I, you know, Frotch is one of my favourite fighters, so I'm a bit biased, but I think um, I think it's good. At least he says how it is. Yeah. He might be actually better in the studio, balancing the shit that Johnny Nelson does and Anna Woolhouse's little encouragement to try and get people to say certain things. So he might be better to actually give a straight narrative there because that's what influences people's opinions of the events. Yeah, yeah. I, I did see a two and a half minute clip with him and Johnny Nelson and the Anna Woolhouse on the Sky website, but I haven't seen the Sky show. I've seen the Dazon show, but uh, yeah, all right then. So the show were pony. Dave Allen didn't fight. Usyk might struggle against the big giant guys. Maybe Usyk could go to Super Cruiser. I mean, that's the perfect way for him. Him and Waller there. That would be good. Gassia won him uh, one yesterday, so. Maybe a bigger weight. Actually, that was such a one-sided beating. It's pointless to see. But Wilder yeah. against Usyk for Super Cruiser belt, WBO, because and then they get rid of they get rid of problem when we heavyweight WBO mandatory, don't they? Yes. There'll be some brown envelopes passed around Rico in the next few months, won't there? No, oh, don't worry. The board will get cough from that as well. Backed with cash. <laughs> All right, then, mate. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure. I'll let you get off because I know you want to get some Sunday roast. I wish. But watching Man United against Arsenal, so Man United better win. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Rico. Well, listen, you take care. Peace out. Keep on trucking. You were going to say that. Keep sporting. Yes. Money. Keep in touch. Peace Don't out. have any nightmares. I won't have no nightmares. All right, my friend. All right, mate. Take care. Speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye. That was Rico from London. Nice guy, Rico, and he tells it straight. I want to thank everybody for liking and subscribing and leaving comments. The people that uh, leave the comments that are not so nice, my advice is this. Email me, porkycorner at mail.com. That's no capitals, P-O-R-K-Y-C-O-R-N-E-R, porkycorner at mail. Dot com. That's not at gmail, that's at mail.com. I'll put it in the first comment on this video, the email. Now, if you want to come on the channel via Zoom, I'm going to give all of you an opportunity because a lot of you, you've got little, tiny little, like, balls, like peas. If you don't come on via Zoom, dare you? But you've plenty to say for yourselves, haven't you? Porky this, porky that. Come on Zoom and let's see your opinion. And we'll turn you from haters into lovers. All right? So have a good Sunday. All right? This will be out about 3 p.m. Peace.